Hello, thank you for joining me. So in this video I'd like to show you how to make the modifications to the pressure plate. This is our first video in the series on how to create, uh, how to make the modifications to the pressure plate with the expectation of making a brand new uh, pressure vessel that will go with it. But the ultimate expectation is taking those two parts and putting them together into your first assembly. And we're going to show you how to do this. So this is the first video in the, in the, in the series. And if you don't know where our website is, it's uh, e-d-and-e-i.com and uh, I'll just show you over here. If you want to go to uh, the uh, classes tab over here on the website, go to the second one down, click on that, and go to the week four link and just back up a little bit. It's in this area called out of class exercises, actually in the week three section. So uh, either way, you can access it. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be going down through this list. So let's pull that aside and uh, let's get started. What we want to do with our base extrude here, and you should call it base extrude. Everything should be labeled in here. Remember, somebody may follow up behind you, and hopefully you're not sharing these with other students in the class, but somebody and uh, whatever you work, work you might be doing in the future might be following behind you. You want to make sure that the work that you've done is fairly clear, and so they have in generic names over here, like Basic Extrude or Boss Extrude 1 or 2 or whatnot. Name your features, okay? It's just good practice. So, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, make modifications. So there's two different ways we can do it. You can double click on the base feature itself just by clicking on that disc over there and changing it this way 155 and go to rebuild you can see it uh, rebuilds there and I've uh, pointed this out in classes a couple other ways too right clicking the sketch itself which defines that you can change that value here or you can go to the basic extrude right clicking that and go to the second item in which is edit sketch and make a modification to that if you wanted to either way Oops. So right click on that, go to edit sketch, and there it is. I don't know what happened there, but uh, now, we're, now we're back where we should be. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a rollback bar and we're going to roll this back. But before we do that, we want to make sure we assign a material. So make sure you do that. I just chose a, a regular alloy steel with the brackets SS on it. So let's take a rollback bar, roll that back. And make sure that when you do assign a material, it's not going to be something like teak or balsa wood. Let's uh, put some material in there that's a little bit more realistic. And by the way, if you haven't done the pressure plate, this is not showing how to do the pressure plate, so if you haven't done it, do it, please. Okay, we're just making modifications to the pressure plate. So let's do this. We have our basic street here, and what we want to do is uh, the second item here, the first item being material, second item being outside diameter 155 millimeters. So this one, if you can read the website, is uh, using the rollback bar after your basic street, you create a bossed edge lip at the bottom of the cover, 8 millimeters wide and 15 millimeters down from the bottom of the plate, name this bottom lip. So let's go ahead and do that. Click on the surface. Go to the sketch tab. and the command manager, go to sketch. And you'll notice that we have this selected. It's blue, which means when we go to convert entities, it's going to take an edge here and actually give that to us. And as what it's doing is it's giving us the outside edge. And that's OK, because we want the outside edge. But there might be a time where we don't want that outside edge, so we're going to have to do it a little bit differently. Uh, the selected first is okay for the most part, but sometimes when you're doing convert entities, selecting the first may not be the best choice because it involves more steps. And of course, we want to be efficient with our design and be able to do things with as few as steps as possible. Okay, enough said here. We have our convert entities uh, element here. What uh, convert entities does? This is a test question. What convert entities does is it takes geometry, it takes uh, existing geometry that's uh, associated in the background with our model that we have so far and puts it into a sketch entity. And what it does is it takes that geometry and projects it at a 90 degree angle under a sketch plane and gives us that sketch geometry. So in this case, it's borrowing the edge of this uh, lid that we have drawn, that we have modeled so far, and it gives us the on-edge sketch relation. So when this uh, disk gets bigger or smaller, this line as a sketch entity here in this plane on this sketch is going to change with that. So that's okay. Green check mark for the convert entities. Let's go ahead and offset that. So go to the offset uh, button. It's automatically going to want to offset it to the outside. We're going to make that uh, eight millimeters. And uh, if we click in this line, it's not going to. It's going to default to the outside. But let's go ahead and click on the inside. It just puts it on the inside for us. To features, extrude boss space. We're going to make sure we go out 15 millimeters. It's uh, already there because I've already been here. Yours might be 10 millimeters, which I think is the, the default setting for millimeters. And uh, yeah, 
green check mark. Puts it in the right spot. So now when I said it needs to be measured from the bottom to that surface, it needs to be 15 millimeters. This is our sketch surface here. So because we extruded from that sketch surface out 15 millimeters, it really is from the bottom here. But we can double check that. We go to evaluate, go to measure, click on that surface, click on this surface. It should say 15 millimeters, which it does. Escape a couple times. Let's move on. We're going to go ahead and call this per the website too. We're going to call that uh, the bottom, the bottom left. So I like to name my features with uh, every letter being capitalized, like with some sort of title. Sketches, I probably put a little bit less emphasis on capitalization. And of course, uh, when you put in uh, elements that are actual annotations, or when you name your part, those should be capitalized because those items, are, especially the description for your part and your assemblies, uh, are going to be imported into your drawing format, so you want to make sure all that's capitalized. Okay, so we have our bottom lip in. What we want to do is make that cut with the bottom lip. And, uh, yeah, I think what we're going to be doing is we're going to save that uh, feature for the next film. So I'm going to go ahead and conclude this here and watch film number two.